Hello everybody and welcome back to Intro to Geometry Nodes, which is my series where I'm going to teach you how to use geometry nodes from knowing nothing, building up to knowing everything. So from beginner to advanced, if you have not seen part zero, I'd recommend watching it where I explain what geometry nodes is. In this part, we are going to be making a very simple geometry nodes modifier because again, what is geometry nodes? It's just a very fancy modifier. We're going to be doing a simple one. What it's going to do is any object we apply our geo nodes modifier to, no matter how complex, no matter where it's positioned, it's going to turn it into a sphere. That's what the modifier is going to do. There's a lot of things modifiers can do. They can make things move. They can bevel things, you know. I'm just going to make it into a sphere. So, uh, assuming that you guys are ready to go, I'm uh, down to start as well. So, again, uh, how do we add geometry nodes to an object? Well, we can either go to Geo Nodes here, click New, that's going to apply the modifier, or again, uh, in any of these workspaces, you can go to Add Modifier, Geometry Nodes, and click New. So I'm going to call this Two Sphere, which again is going to edit it here. So everything we've done so far is we said Apply a Modifier, it's called Two Sphere, and here are the instructions for it. Now, um, you see these two nodes, and the question is what do these nodes do so far, and what can we put in between, right? So first of all, we have the group input. This is saying this is the information we get to begin with. In this case, we're starting off with a cube. That's in the group input. If I was to uh, make this a monkey and apply the same GeoNodes group, so I'm gonna, gonna add a GeoNodes, I'm gonna make it two sphere. Um, for both of these cases, we have the same GeoNodes uh, preset in a sense, uh, but the group input is referring to different things. In this case, it's referring to the cube. When we apply to this one, it's referring to the monkey. So we have a input, the thing it's being applied to. And that is being sent to the output, what's being shown. So really, this is a pretty boring network. Uh, we're saying take what we give it and output it. But if I'm to sever this connection, you can see that it's going to get rid of both. By the way, to sever a connection, you can just kind of go like that with the mouse. We'll talk about shortcuts like this later. Uh, but the point is, if I sever this connection, um, now you're saying you're seeing that we get nothing because nothing's connected to the group output. If instead I'm going to use Shift A in the same way that you use Shift A in the 3D viewport to add objects, right? So you can add a cube. I'm going to add. I'm going to click Shift A and I'm going to type in cube. I can use this as a input. Notice that this has a green socket and so does this. This means that we have a mesh uh, information. I'm going to send this to the group output and now you can see both of these are cubes, even though even though originally, if I disable the modifier, this was a monkey, because we're not even looking at the group input. If I was to swap it out like this, we're taking what was there originally and saying, send that to what is being viewed or being outputted. If I swap it like this, we get this. Now, it doesn't have to be a cube. Of course, uh, in the mesh primitives, this is where, so I just typed in cube because I didn't want to figure out what menu it was in. Uh, but this thing's called the primitive. It's one of the meshes that kind of already exists. So we go to mesh primitives. Uh, you can use a cone, a cube, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to use a UV sphere. Don't worry about UV. Basically, what it means is sphere. Connect that here, and now we have two spheres. Not only that, but we can control some of the obvious parameters, like increasing the radius, uh, you know, increasing or decreasing the resolution of it, etc. One thing I want to note, though, is that both of these are using the exact same GeoNodes group, right? So if I do this, it's going to affect both of them no matter what the initial mesh was. If I wanted these to both have GeoNodes but to have different groups, what I could have done is I could have said, uh, for this one, uh, use a different GeoNodes group. This one's now sending input to output. And I could do something like, oh, again, we don't know what I'm about to do. I haven't explained it yet, right? But let's say we rotate it. So we have one GeoNode group that rotates it. Or I could say, use the two sphere command. Either way, we're having um, Suzanne, the monkey, as input. It's just that in the two sphere, we're not using it. Similarly, uh, for this one, we can have the rotate group or the two sphere group. But what I wanted to show you in this tutorial, and let me just kind of reset, is how do you take any object and turn it into a sphere, which we've kind of already said. So let's have a bunch of objects. Let's have some of them be a bit more complicated, like a donut. To make something into a sphere, we add a GeoNodes group. We say, screw the input, right? We can even delete it, X to delete. And we can say, take this and turn it into a sphere. So connect that. Now we have a, a sphere. If I wanted this one to be a sphere, we can either use the same group, which I should really name two sphere. 
Or what I can do is I can click this uh, to button. This says that there's two objects with this uh, node group uh, applied, so the, these two. If I click this, they're now going to be independent from each other. So you can see this has two sphere applied, and this has two sphere 001, which is to say two sphere 2 applied. And I can make this radius bigger now without it affecting the first, because these are different groups. Notice this has a radius 2.4, and this has a radius 1. For this cube, do I want it to be a small sphere or a big sphere? Well, for a small sphere, it's going to be two sphere. For a big sphere, it's going to be two sphere 2. The, the core idea here is I want you to think about it about this as we have a group input, which is what we initially have as geometry. If we say ignore this and instead just put in a sphere, that's what we're going to get. So I don't want you to feel attached to this idea of we have a cube and we're going to modify it and turn it into a sphere. No, get rid of the cube and uh, put it directly in the output. So as a final kind of thing, main thing I want you to know is we have a group input. This is what we start with, um, and I want to send that to a group output. Let me actually just reset here so we have a nice clean scene. We have a, a group input. This is um, everything we're loading in. Group output is what we are showing, and then things in between are ways we can modify it. So, you know, I could add a transform, say take the input, move it up, and put it as the output, or we could say have a completely different input to begin with. So we made a super simple modifier that turns things into spheres. And let me get back over here. So I know it feels like we're moving pretty slowly here, right? Like in part zero, I just showed you what is geometry nodes. Like it's a modifier. How do we open it? And now in part one, or part two really, but part one, I showed you, oh, we can turn things into spheres. I know we're moving slowly, but these ideas uh, build on each other. And soon we are going to kind of like the end of level one, I'm thinking, is we're going to be turning a cube into a snowman, right? So that's going to involve adding spheres, stacking them, moving objects, cones for the nose, everything, okay? Um, but yeah, we, we start slowly. That, that's just how it goes. Um, in the next part, part two, I'm going to show you how I do all those fancy commands where I like connect nodes and sever nodes and all this, uh, just so that you don't need to ask in the future. And then we're going to move on to moving objects. So hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll see you on the next one.